Okay, we're live. Hi there, this is Toby. And uh, in this video, uh, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the LLVM tutorial. Um, the uh, In particular, the uh, LLVM tutorial that is the second in this list within this page is, is called uh, Kaleidoscope, implementing a language with LLVM. Um, Okay, so that's what we're doing. Uh, but before we start, let me talk a little bit about LLVM. Uh, at least explain briefly what is LLVM. So um, the top level page of LLVM.org uh, looks like this. And the title for the tagline for LLVM is the LLVM Compiler Infrastructure. Um, LLVM is really big in the C and C++ community uh, because it is uh, a state-of-the-art C and C++ and also Objective-C compiler. Uh, which, uh, from what I've heard, uh, it's quite a bit faster than the other leading C compilers, in particular GCC. Uh, it the 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 executable binaries, uh, like the executable programs that this system compiles, in particular the Clang system, compiles, it's quite a bit faster. So, uh, but the LLVM infrastructure is also popular for another reason. In particular, you can use some of the modules within this infrastructure as a building block for creating your own uh, programming languages or, or, or in your own compiler design. You can use some of the building blocks within LLVM to do that, uh, and which is largely why I'm interested in it. Um, uh, as some of you might know, I, uh, I have a very big interest in programming languages, how they work, how to build uh, a programming language yourself. I have uh, created a series, a video series called How to Make a Programming Language, and uh, which I, th I think only is is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all of the knowledge that uh, you would need to learn to learn how to actually make compilers. And um, so, uh, so for, for those reasons, I, I want to learn LLVM. Um, so the tutorial that I'm going to go through is you can find it uh, if you start from their homepage and then go to uh, documentation, I believe, uh, and then go to get things started slash tutorials, and then and then the second list item in this table of contents called LLVM tutorial colon table of contents uh, this is the tutorial that I'm going to do uh, the toy language so-called toy language that uh, I'll be making I'll just follow step by step this tutorial although I may deviate a bit if I feel brave at certain points during the tutorial um, yeah we're gonna be making a kaleidoscope uh, or not making a kaleidoscope making a toy programming language called Kaleidoscope. Uh, there's actually a C++ version of this tutorial as well as a Objective Camel version, which Objective Camel is a popular uh, functional programming language. Um, I'm going to follow the C++ version of the tutorial, which uh, you can access via this first link here. Um, yes. Uh, and this first video will cover going through the chapter one, but um, actually, let's talk a little bit about what LLVM is first. Um, uh, so in my first video in this how to make a programming language uh, series, I, I, uh, I sort of gave an overview of what is the architecture of a programming language when you're building a programming language. 
what are the sort of boxes and arrows within that architecture. I'm gonna briefly uh, summarize it here. Uh, basically, you start with uh, some code that the user of your programming language has written. Um, the first step in your in your machinery that you're gonna make is you're gonna need to write a parser. The parser is this readable? Actually, I think I might have flux turned on, which means you may not uh, see all of the colors. So let me turn that off. Also, this light is quite a bit bright. So I'm gonna turn, okay. Uh, you're gonna write a parser that is gonna take this code and then it's gonna spit out something called an AST. AST is the abstract syntax tree. And an abstract syntax tree is like a data structure representation. It's a it's a it's a nested data structure representation of what the syntax of the code is that your user wrote. Uh, once you're at this AST stage, then the next step is take this AST and convert it to machine code. And that step is called the generator. So AST goes in to the next step of the pipeline called generator, and the generator uh, creates machine code. Okay, uh, and the, what is machine code? Well, machine code is code that your processor can execute, can understand and execute. So your processor looks something like this. Uh, it usually says Intel on it. Uh, your computer that you're running right now probably has it. Even your smartphone that you're using right now to maybe watch this video has a CPU that looks like this. Um, may or may not say Intel on it, but it probably does. Uh, this machine code then goes into the, the CPU, which actually understands these machine code and the CPU will execute those instructions, making your program actually work. Now, where does LLVM fit into this picture? Um, well, LLVM fits within this generator. Um, LLVM can be used as a component within your code generator. Um, now, how does that work? Let's go back. Uh, okay, let's go back here. So instead of this picture, uh, if, if you decide to use LLVM as one of the building blocks of your compiler, then this is what you're gonna do instead. Instead of having your generator generate machine code, you're still gonna make a generator. You're still gonna take the AST and and run it through your generator, but this time your generator is gonna generate LLVM IR code. Um, LLVM doesn't actually stand for anything. If <laughs> I, I, it's not actually an acronym. So if you go to the front page of LLVM.org, let me show you. If you go to the front page of LLVM.org, it says, despite its name, LLVM has little to do, LLVM, the name LLVM itself is not an acronym. So uh, I can't really tell you what LLVM stands for. LLVM is just the name of this project, which, which is a compiler infrastructure tool set, right? Uh, what is IR? IR stands for intermediate representation. Intermediate representation. Why is it called intermediate representation? Well, it's it's code that, that, that is somewhere in your pipeline, but it's not the end result that uh, we need. 
in order for your code to actually run on the CPU. Because before we get there, we actually need to run this guy through an yet another box. Um, and then and then after going through that box, that's when you get machine code. Then you get the machine code that can go into your CPU. That looks that looks kind of like that. Okay, um, that's why it's an intermediate representation. It's not the code that the user wrote. It's it's lower level than that, but it's not quite so level that is machine code. Therefore, it's a intermediate representation. And this box that will take your LLVM IR code and spit out machine code for you, that program uh, is provided by the LLVM project. It is called LLC. Uh, C probably means compile, pa compiler. Uh, so LLC is a compiler that will take any code that is LLVM, that's valid LLVM IR code and generate machine code for you. Uh, why do you want to do this? Why is this a good idea? Well, first of all, if you do this, um, you, you don't have to understand how machine code works, and, which is kind of nice because there's a lot of low level details that a actual CPU uh, you know that there's a lot of learning that you would have to do to get intimately knowledgeable about a particular CPU. Uh, another reason is you might want to target your program for more than one kind of CPU. There are different CPU brands, different CPU architectures. There's the Intel, the ARM, the Spark. Those are all different kinds of processors and each of them have a different uh, language set. They have a different machine code uh, instruction set. So if you wanted to target more than one of them, normally you would have to figure out how to generate machine code for each of those architectures. Uh, if you generate LLVM IR, uh, the LL compiler actually knows how to spit out machine code of any of these popular architecture, popular CPU types. So, um, so yeah, so you get a lot of value, a lot of bang for the buck. You, you just spit out one IR code format and then you get access to all of these different architecture platforms. Uh, another reason you this is a, might be a good idea is that uh, LLVM uh, sort of has a big focus on performance and, and therefore the compiler has a optimizer package with it or, or, or it, there's a pack optimizer that you can use with it I should say um, which is able to generate more optimized code which can run faster on any of the CPU types that it supports. So um, if, if you are not extremely knowledgeable about compilers and how to make really super fast code, well, you don't have to, you just outsource that part, the job to the LLVM project. And the LLVM project is a tool chain that does that really well. So that's nice. Uh, okay, so um, one thing I want to say is um, the tutorial that we're going to follow uh, is called My First Language Frontend with LLVM Tutorial. Uh, why the word frontend? Well, uh, in it, this is not frontend as in a web user interface frontend. Um, in, in, in compiler terms, the frontend means uh, this bit more or less. So this part is the front end. The bit that's generating the machine code, that is the back end. Um, and the code, this guy is kind of a in between, like you're gonna write some a code generator 
that generates some LLVM IR code with which uh, the backend, which is the LL compiler, will uh, work on. So, so I guess the, uh, the the reason the tutorial is called my first language front end with LLVM is because you actually didn't have to write the back end. You only have to write the front end, uh, which is the parser. And then sort of, yeah, there's this part. Arguably, that's also the front end. Um, you, you, all you have to do is generate this LLVM intermediate representation. And then the back end has been taken care of you. You don't have to do the learn machine code and all that stuff, which is really hard if you haven't done that before. Um, an analogy would be like you, you're making a web application, um, but instead of writing your own backend, you're going to use a cloud-based database or, or a, or a, uh, uh, what is it? Platform as a service that has this sort of database built in, which you can just access with REST API calls. Um, you, you can build a whole app by only building the front end. So that's kind of what we're doing right now with, with building a programming language. Okay. Uh, all right. So let's get started with this. Uh, uh, so I'm going to be following along this tutorial. This tutorial is going to be in C++. Um, I've been brushing up on my C++. Uh, I've done it a long time ago. And really, honestly, I have never been very knowledgeable about C++. Uh, more recently, I've been brushing up on it uh, and learning uh, specific things that were confusing me uh, partially to get ready for this. So let's dive into it. Um, let's do this tutorial. Okay, so, uh, so my first language front end with LLVM tutorial. Um, so this tutorial introduces the simple kaleidoscope language uh, building it iteratively over the course of several chapters, showing how it is built over time. This lets us cover a range of language design and LLVM specific ideas, showing and explaining the code for it all along the way and reduces the overwhelming amount of detail up front. Uh, we strongly encourage that you work with this code, make a copy and hack it up and experiment. Um, Warning, in order to focus on teaching compiler techniques and LLVM specifically, this tutorial does not show best practices in software engineering principles. For example, the code uses global variables pervasively, does not use visitors, etc., but instead keeps things simple and focuses on the topics at hand. Okay, noted. So let's get started. Uh, so the first chapter is going to be on the lexer. So we're going to build a lexer. The programming language we're going to build looks like this. It looks very much like Python. That's nice. I like Python. This is a Fibonacci program. So cliche. I've done that like a million times. That's fine. Um, in chapter six, we, we use the program to display a Mandelbrot set at various <laughs> levels of magnification. This tutorial really knows its audience. Oh man, I'm, I'm crazy about the Mandelbrot set. Okay, so let's follow this tutorial and make a lecture. So I'm going to, um, oh, one thing, uh, actually. Um, uh, actually, I think what I'm gonna do is split this series up into shorter chunks. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually, um, I think cut it short here and then start the next one. Uh, so I'll, I'll see you on the other side. 